Have you ever said to yourself, maybe if I watch one more video and learn what's in another photographer's camera bag, I'll be able to get some secrets that'll make me a better photographer. Yeah, I didn't think so. What's up? I'm Jayla Blank, wedding photographer and photography educator. Today I'm gonna dive into what's inside of my camera bag that I bring with me to every portrait and engagement session that I do. Now before I get into that, I gotta let you know, you're pretty lucky you clicked on this video because we have a special guest in today's video. Buddy, my dog right there, absolutely refused to get off the couch because it is a cold, rainy day and that is where he will spend the entire day. So he said, you know what, Dad? I'm gonna be in the background of this video and I'm not moving. So you get to enjoy my dog in the background for the whole video. Without further ado, let's look what's inside of my camera bag. Now my go-to camera and lens is going to be the Canon R5 with the 28-270. I could shoot almost the entire session with just this setup. And sometimes I do. Sometimes this lens is all I need. The body is what it is. All professional level cameras these days are good. I'm not here to debate which one's better than the other. Now I know opinions are like and everybody has one. But I'm just saying this is what I use. This lens though is awesome. I know some people that swear that you need to shoot portrait sessions and engagement sessions on prime lenses. I really don't understand that. This lens, I honestly feel a little bit the other way. Now I've done it. I shot strictly prime lenses for about three years of my career. I started off with zooms, I went to primes, and then I went back to zooms. I just felt like I was missing too many shots when I was shooting on prime lenses. And I know what they say, zoom with your feet, right? Well, sometimes things happen so quickly in front of you, you don't have the opportunity to, and you miss shots. I like having the ability to make sure I get as much as possible, and if that means putting a zoom lens on my camera so I can quickly zoom out instead of walking backwards 10 feet, I'm gonna do so so I don't miss a shot. I also love shooting wide environmental portraits of my clients and showing the environment that they are in, that they chose for their photo session. This is why I like having a lens with a wider option. Some people will shoot an entire portrait session with a 50 millimeter, and I feel like you're missing out on some opportunities there. Yeah, you might wanna shoot everything at 1.4 or 1.2, which I don't mind because for the most part, I'm shooting at f4, maybe even higher. Yeah, there's some shots that I will go down to 2.8 or f2, but for the most part, when it comes to engagement shoots or portrait sessions of families, you're dealing with more than one person. Unless you want only one person in focus and everybody else blurry, you're probably gonna have to shoot at a higher f-stop than 1.4. Just because that's all you see on Instagram doesn't mean that's what people want. Sometimes people like seeing their faces. Now, don't get me started with the 2024 trend here going on with like, ooh, I want all my pictures blurry because I saw it on Instagram and, uh, I don't actually like the way my face looks, so can we just make all my pictures blurry? Well, in that case, Go ahead, shoot at 1.4, maybe throw your camera in manual focus and handhold one fifth of a second and just take a lot of caffeine before the shoot. Then you know what? You just might become Instagram famous by the end of the year. Just saying, you heard it here first. But if that's not your style, let's go ahead and raise our f-stop a little bit. Let's get the whole family in focus. And then when it comes to family portraits, I sometimes like doing action shots. Even on my engagement shoots, I like to include movement. And sometimes I'll have kids or the couple run towards me. And listen, there's only so fast I can run back backwards with a camera in my hand. So having the ability to zoom out as somebody is running full speed towards me definitely allows me to get more shots without tripping while trying to run backwards and uh, seriously hurting myself. And uh, I'm not gonna admit that it hasn't happened before because that would be embarrassing. Don't be that guy. Did I mention this lens is really big? A lot of people don't like it because it's so big, but can I let you in on a little secret? It's a really good lens. And if you wanna hear more about my opinion on this lens, check out this video right here. But not until the end of this video because I got some more tips for you here. Now, some people are gonna wanna shoot a little bit more telephoto than 70 millimeters, and I agree. I wanna do it sometimes as well. And I'm gonna bring one other lens with me, and that's my 70 to 200. This is the EF 70 to 200 2.8 IS version two. This lens is awesome. I love this lens. I have no reason for upgrading it. It is a workhorse. You have to throw on the EF to RF adapter on it, so it works flawlessly on these Canon mirrorless bodies. And it's a really nice option to have when you wanna compress the background a little bit, or just shoot at a little bit longer of a range. Maybe you wanna shoot across a little bit of a pond or at a distance down a walking path where you have a cool line of trees or some buildings in the background. It gives you some of those options for really just compressing the subject and the background. Now, I don't use this lens on every single portrait session, but I do bring it with me. I'd say I use it at about 60% of my shoots. So sometimes, not all the time though. Now, most of my portrait sessions are gonna be taking place outdoors. In fact, almost all of them are taking place outdoors. Sometimes they end indoors, but for the most part, we're outside and we're usually dealing with natural light. Sometimes the natural lighting is good, sometimes it's bad. 
I usually try and shoot in that golden hour or that blue hour so I do have a better quality of light. But when I just can't work with the light that I am given, I bring a flash. I keep one speed light with me. I do bring additional flashes with me to the shoot, but I don't always take them out. I usually get to the location, see what the lighting looks like, and see if I can work with that lighting at that location. If I need to break out bigger lights and a softbox, I will absolutely do that. I have my assistant with me to help carry that around during the shoot and we can make that work. But for the most part, I just have the one flash if it's needed. And then I have a wireless trigger that I can use to fire my flash off camera. If I wanna do something fun and creative, maybe backlighting a couple, or if we're at an indoor location, I wanna side light them somewhere. It just allows me to get my flash off camera and gives me a little bit more flexibility for different options of things that I can do. Another thing that I keep in my camera bag, now selfishly, I will admit, it's for me, but sometimes it can be a really good motivator when working with kids, and that's snacks. Right now I have gummy bears in my camera bag, and Sometimes you just say to the kids who maybe aren't behaving or cooperating super well, say, hey, you do this for me, I'll give you some gummy bears, and you'd be amazed at how well that works. You instantly become that kid's best friend. Now to modify my flash, I keep some mag mod modifiers. I have the sphere and a grid here, as well as this bag is just full of gels, so I can gel my light and do some creative fun stuff with it if I think that the scene needs it. And the last couple things I have in here is I carry a couple extra batteries with me, always super important, and then I will carry extra memory cards. Although on a portrait session, they're usually pretty short, and in an engagement shoot, I'll only use one, maybe two memory cards. I still like to keep a lot of extras with me in case I decide I need to shoot at high burst rate the entire session. Now that's what's in my camera bag for the entire portrait shoot or engagement session. And this bag is just gonna stay right on my shoulder. One shoulder will have this bag, the other shoulder has the camera hanging off of it. Now, just because this is all I bring with me while I'm actually shooting, I still leave a little bit extra gear in my car. I like to leave an extra camera body because you never know if you might drop a camera, it might just randomly stop working, stuff happens. So I bring an extra camera body with me because I don't wanna tell my clients, oh, we can't do the shoot because my camera broke, so I always carry an extra body. And then like I mentioned before, I carry some extra lights. If the lighting that I'm dealing with that day isn't exactly the most flattering, I keep two Godox 8200s with me, as well as a MagMod softbox. This way if the lighting isn't ideal, I can modify it and make it look a little bit better and still provide good quality images to my clients instead of just saying, oh, well, the lighting was bad. Sorry, you picked it. And the last thing I like to keep in my camera bag, back here in the back, little secret, it's a couple Ziploc bags. I like keeping these with me because you never know when it's gonna rain. I live in the Northeast and during the summertime, it gets pretty humid and I feel like there's just always like a 20% chance of rain. So when I'm shooting, especially during the summertime and there's a slight possibility of rain, I like to keep plastic bags with me. Now I know my camera is weather sealed and that's all good for a light rain, but you never know where water might get into the camera and we wanna keep it protected. So I keep these bags with me. This is just a gallon sized Ziploc bag. And what I actually do here is I cut out a hole on the end of it. And that allows my lens to stick out. So I keep my camera body with my hand inside the bag and my lens will stick out the front of this hole at the end of the plastic bag. Wait, I don't have to worry as much about my camera getting wet. This is just what I use in my portrait sessions. A lot of people are gonna say that they wanna shoot only with primes or they're gonna need to bring much more lighting or a lot wider variety of lenses. And then other photographers are gonna say, I need one camera and one lens and I will do the entire session at one f-stop and you know what good for you if you're making a living doing that keep on doing what you're doing but if you're just looking for some ideas for what you could add or maybe do a little bit differently for your portrait sessions well maybe this helped you and if it did i would love if you could leave a like and comment below tell me your opinion about what you think is the perfect setup for doing a portrait or engagement session and until the next video peace